Many years ago, in the village of Umuli, there lived a young lady named Kambili. She was an orphan and had just been married to Obinna. Obinna was a poor farmer who lived in his family house with his mother and siblings. Their family was a very poor one and was known throughout the village for their miserly farming, which was barely enough to feed them. Obinna had two younger brothers, and every other day, they would go out into people's farms to do menial jobs. They would either cultivate or weed their farmlands so as to be able to support what they got from their farm. It was on one of such days that they went out to weed a farm that Obinna saw Kambili. She had also come to help harvest cassava for the owner of the farm. Kambili was a gentle and well-mannered lady. And as soon as she saw Obinna and his brothers, she respectfully greeted them with a warm smile and went on with her work. Obinna could not help but notice how hardworking and focused she was, and he took a liking for her instantly. He wasted no time in extending a hand of friendship to her, and Kambili accepted. After a long period of friendship, Obinna proposed to her, and she gladly accepted to marry him. When the villagers heard that Obinna would be getting married, they were amused. Who would be so stupid as to marry such a wretched man who comes from a more wretched family? They can barely even feed themselves, and they want to add an additional mouth? Oh, I am very sorry for that girl, the villagers would say among themselves. But when they heard that it was Kambili, the poor orphan girl, that was the bride to Obinna, they were a little relieved. They fit each other. They can just continue their poverty lineage. Kambili is perfect for that family. Obinna and Kambili ignored all the side talks and went on with their marriage. But even though they were both worried about what the future holds for them, they held their hands tight and promised to stand by each other and face it together. The first few months of the marriage was very difficult, but Obinna never felt regrets or vented his frustration on Kambili for once. And then one day, their story changed. Obinna had gone out to weed a farm one morning. He went alone while his two younger brothers went to a different farm. As he was weeding and digging out some roots, he stumbled on something hard and he got curious. He bent lower to see what it was and when he removed the sand that was covering it, he saw a big brown sack that was tied and had been buried in the ground. After looking left and right to be sure no one was around, he untied the sack and almost screamed out in shock. Immediately, he tied the sack back and carried it, covering it with the wrapper he had come with, and hurriedly left for his house. Thankfully, when he got home, he met Kambili at home, and when he showed her the contents of the sack, her eyes almost popped out in shock. Obinna, what is this? Where did you get it from? Obinna calmed her down. Shh! I saw it at the farm I went to weed today. I don't know who owns it, so I decided to bring it home. This is a lot of gold, and whoever has this will surely come back for this, so we need to keep this safe, Obinna said. Kambili was still in shock, and she asked, What if the person does not come? What do we do with this? Obinna looked at her, not sure of what to say. The husband and wife looked at each other, each having a series of thoughts racing through their minds, but which they would rather not voice out. Obinna went to finish the weeding job at the farm, expecting the owner of the farm to ask him about a missing sack. But surprisingly, the woman just paid him and left. He decided to wait for one month, but still, nobody in the village reported about any missing sack. That night, he called Yidi, and before he could say anything, she told him, The gods has blessed us. Our days of lack are over. Obinna smiled and told her, Yes, this is a confirmation. I was just about to say the same thing. Our lives have changed, Obinna said while laughing. And then, he knelt down in front of me. You are my good luck charm. 
Just few months of getting married to you and my life has changed. I promise you this day that I will never disappoint you. I will never make you cry. You were supportive when I had nothing. And now that I have this, you will be my everything. His heart melted and she lifted Obina up and hugged him. The next day, Obina took a few pieces of the gold to a very far away village to trade it. He did this so as not to raise any suspicion among the villagers. He wanted to keep the source of his wealth a mystery. Obina returned with a lot of money as the gold was priced at a very high value and within a short period of time, their lives changed. Obina moved out of the family house into a very big house he built and also established his two younger brothers. His mother was not left out as he ensured that she had the best life. He then went on to buy numerous farmlands and employed people to cultivate on them. The transformation in Obina's life was so sudden that people began to talk. They would never have believed that Obina would ever own a bigger farmland, not to talk of owning several lands. As he stood now, he was the richest man in Umuli, after the king. One evening, a small group of young men were on their way to check their traps in the bush when they passed by one of Obina's farmlands, and they could not help but marvel at the way things changed for him overnight. But come to think of it, have you ever wondered how Obina became suddenly wealthy? Don't you think that Kambili is the reason for his wealth? We all know that Obina's poverty is hereditary. Look at his brothers. Even his father and grandfather died very poor, but he got married to Kambili and then suddenly he became rich, one of the young men said. Another one affirmed, that is very true. I have been thinking about this too. Kambili is an example of those type of women our ancestors would call good luck charm. They only come once in a lifetime. How did we miss her? How come it was Obina that saw what we did not see? The young men were very convinced that Kambili was the cause of Obina's wealth. And deep down, they all did not mind snatching Kambili away from Obina, who would not want such a woman in his life. As the months went by, Obina's wealth grew and tripled, and he was living a very extravagant life with his wife, Kambili. It was not even up to one year that he got married to her, and even the blind in the village could sense the air of wealth hovering around Obina. Unknown to Obina, his wife, Kambili, has become the most wanted woman in the village. All the men secretly desired to make her their wife and they would conceive all kind of evil in mind for Obina, even wishing him dead. Kambili was not aware of this and just carried on her life, enjoying the life that she had been blessed with. She was greatly pampered by Obina, who provided everything she needed and made sure that she did not lift a finger. He employed several maids for her to always attend to her every need. However, even though Kambili lacked nothing, she was very lonely. She had not given birth yet, and Obina was not usually around due to his several businesses, leaving Kambili all alone with total strangers who were programmed to be at her beck and call. She was hopeful, however, that she would soon conceive and have her own child to complete her life. But unfortunately for Kambili, that dream never came to pass, as her joy was cut short. One night, she had woken up to urinate when she heard a noise at the door. Obina was not around, and so she decided to go make sure that the house doors were properly locked. But as she came out of the walkway that led to the sitting room, she froze in shock and then, slowly, she retreated to her room. Kambili closed the door behind her, slided to the floor and as if controlled by a remote control, burst out into tears. She held her chest tightly as if it would break into two if she left it alone. Kambili cried and cried that night until there was no more water in her eyes. Obina returned from his trip the next day 
and started to complain of a severe headache. But even after taking medication, the ache would still not go. And then, he slept that night and didn't wake up again. Kambili got up the next morning and felt that it was unusual for Obinna to still be sleeping by that time. But when she tried to wake him up and he was still, she ran out to get help. Sadly for her, when the herbalist came to check on Obinna, he confirmed him dead. Kambili could not believe it. He was okay. He just complained of a headache. Obinna, you cannot just go like that. No. Obinna, get up. Don't do this to me. Kambili cried and was uncontrollable. It was just one year of her marriage and she had lost her husband. What was the essence of all the whole wealth without a husband? Obinna's mother and brothers were shocked when they heard of his death and they rushed over to the house where they saw Kambili crying bitterly on the floor. Obinna's mother looked at Kambili with anger and bitterness in her eyes, although she did not utter a word. While Obinna's two younger brother went to console Kambili, they were warm towards her and assured her that they would look after her. Unknown to Kambili, her brothers-in-law were also among the men who had secretly desired her, and now that Obinna was dead, they were now free to come out plainly. They were selfish, however, and each wanted her for himself. One would go secretly into Kambili's room in the night and try to take advantage of her vulnerability, but she would resist him. They continued to try several means to get her until it became clear to Kambili that her two brother-in-laws were interested in her. She found it abominable, however, and started to avoid them. Obinna was finally buried and then his mother called for a family meeting. Kambili and her brothers-in-law were present and the meeting was about the way forward. Now that Obinna has been buried, we need to come together as a family and work for the progress of this family. Obinna left behind several businesses that need our supervision and also you Kambili, we need to know your intention. What do you intend to do now that your husband is dead? Kambili looked lost and she did not know what to say or do. Suddenly, one of the brothers spoke up. Mother, it's a pity that Obinna left his young wife behind. But this is not a hopeless case because, according to tradition, his younger brother should take over his wife. And since I am his immediate younger brother, I would marry Kambili and then easily manage his businesses. Immediately, the youngest brother countered him. That's a big lie. You already engaged to another woman. So why will you get married to Kambili? I am the right person to marry her. Kambili was shocked as the two brothers argued back and forth until their mother shouted at them to keep quiet. Look at me, you two. One of you would have to marry Kambili and take over your brother's businesses. So you better settle and decide amicably. Kambili, you have to get married to one of your brothers-in-law to secure your position in this family since you don't have a child yet. Kambili could not believe it. Her mother-in-law and brothers-in-law were all ridiculous. One was insensitive and the others were selfish. Even if she wanted to marry one before, she would not again because it was clear that they were only concerned about Obina's wealth. Since the two brothers would not decide amicably, their mother called Kambili to choose one. But when Kambili refused to marry anyone, she became angry and sent her out of the family. Obinna's brothers then went and shared his businesses between themselves. Kambili went back to her old hut, which she had abandoned for over a year. She would never have believed that she would return there again. She felt betrayed by the people she had taken as family. And what hurt her the most was that they sent her away with nothing. They collected everything, the wealth that they did not even know how it came about. She decided to dust the past off herself and start afresh by going back to her farm labor jobs. 
But the morning she set out to leave, she was greeted by a young man who came to greet her with lots of gifts and foodstuffs. Kambili was surprised, but she accepted the gifts and thanked him. She did not need to go out to work again since she had food now. And that day alone, four other young men came to her hut to greet her and gave her gifts too. The news that Kambili was now back to her hut had spread throughout the village and those men who longed to have her were now free to meet her and woo her. They would troop in their numbers into her hut, bearing gifts. At first, Kambili accepted those gifts, believing that they were just innocent gifts. But when this man started to propose marriage to her, she became suspicious. Why would this man suddenly want to marry me? These were the same men who had ignored and looked down on me before Obina married me. So what changed now? If at all, I am now a widow and should not be desired like this. Even though Kambini did not know the motives of this man, she rejected them all one by one and they soon started to fight among themselves on who should back off and who should marry Kambini. The pressure was getting too much on Kambini, coupled with the fact that she was starting to be the enemy of other girls in the village. She then decided to marry a young man named Kosi. He was also among the men who had come to propose marriage to her. But unlike the rest, he did not seem desperate. He appeared genuine and was more interested in earning her true friendship. She knew that once she got married, the other men would stop disturbing her. And so, she chose Kosi. Kosi was very excited and felt like a king when Kambili accepted to marry him. Unknown to her, he also had the same motive the other men had. He only wanted to marry her because of her good luck and fortune charm. Kosi was a comfortable man and could easily provide his basic needs, but he desired for more. He wanted to be wealthy even more than Obina was, and so he carefully strategized on how to use a different approach from the rest. He saw that the others were applying force and came off as being desperate, and so he decided to be gentle in his own approach, and it worked out perfectly. He quickly married her and brought her into his home. Kosi then became the envy of all the men in the village for winning the golden egg. Since his main reason for marrying Kambili was to become wealthy, Kosi would wake up every morning looking around to see if any secret fortune was in his house. He remembered that it was exactly four months after Obina married Kambili that he became rich. And so, he decided to be patient and wait too so that his wealth would come by then. But unfortunately for him, four months passed but nothing changed. Instead, something strange started to happen. The little business and farm he owned started to go down. The farms were no longer producing crops and his business was also going down. It got so bad to the extent that he could barely feed. At this point, Kosi could no longer pretend again and started to lash out on Kambini who was still in the dark about his true intentions. That night, Kosi had just returned home after a bad day and as soon as he saw Kambili, he got even more angry and shouted at her. Bia Kambili, were you sent to help me or to ruin me? This was not what I bargained for at all. When you came into my house, we were feeding fine. Now you came and instead of you to multiply it, you dried up everything. Did I offend you? Why did it get to my tongue and you decided to be wicked? Kambili was confused and did not quite get his anger. My husband, what is the matter? Did anyone offend you today? Kosi shouted at her even more. It is you that offended me, Kambili. Ah, why did I fall into your scam? I thought you were the reason Obina became rich. Now look at me. I used my hands to go and marry problem. Kambili, why did you accept to marry me? You would have rejected me. You did not choose the fine. You did not choose a maker. Look at Chima and Ugo. They were also there begging to marry you. You didn't choose them. Why me? 
I would have just been managing my small money in peace. So now look at me. Every day, it's as if somebody is using straw to soak my finances dry. Kosi cried helplessly at this point. Kambele was beyond shocked. If she understood him well, he married her because he believed that she would make him wealthy. Wait, was that why the other men were killing themselves to have her too? Ah, how? Who told them that? How come I'm not even aware of this? So none of those men loved me, even Kosi. Kambele was heartbroken at the reality. But before she could say anything, Kosi faced her and told her bluntly, I give you six months. Six months to make me rich. If not, I will send you out of my house. If you know your fellow people that usually make a man rich, you better go and beg them now to make me rich. If not, I will disgrace you in this village. And you know what it means for you if I send you packing. You are a widow already. And now you will be a divorcee. No man will ever look at you again. Kambele cried and cried as Kosi said those hurtful words to her. Why would he treat her like this after promising to love and stand by her? So he was just a pretender. Kambele would cry to bed every night as Kosi continued to harass her every day. The harassment increased every day because his situation had become really bad. He was now very poor, even poorer than the village mouse, and it didn't even reach up to six months before he sent Kambini away. He could no longer bear to keep her in his house before he would die of poverty. But the problem was that even after he sent Kambini away, his situation did not still improve. He continued being poor and would bite his finger in regrets every day. If he had known, he would never have gone close to Kambini. Shockingly also, Obinna's family had also gone back to their poverty state. After Obinna's mother chased Kambini out empty-handed, the two younger brothers took over the businesses. But mysteriously, the businesses started to go down. The several farmlands that Obinna had acquired were not left out also. They would not bear any fruits and gradually the soil became dry and barren that no matter what was planted there, it would wither. In a space of six months, they had lost everything and had to return to their old family house. While all the things were going on, the villagers were watching in shock and the young men who had once wanted to kill themselves over Kambili were grateful that she rejected them. Seeing how Kosi had gone from 5 to 0 in such a short space, they were now convinced that Kambili was a bad luck charm and that Obinna's wealth was just coincidental. They all started to avoid Kambili and treated her like an outcast. Kambili went back to her roots again and this time around, she decided that she had had enough of men drama. She decided not to get close to any man again and just live her life alone. She started to go to farmlands to look for jobs, but unfortunately, no one would hire her. They did not want her to touch their crops with her bad luck hands. When she saw that it was getting worse, she decided to leave the village before she would die of starvation. Kambele went to the neighboring village where she was not known and luckily for her, she got a laborer job to carry sand and cement in a building that was currently under construction. Since she had no place to live in, she would go and wait at a corner until all the laborers left before sneaking back into the uncompleted building to sleep. The next morning, she would wake up very early and take her baths before the other workers would start coming. This was the kind of life Kambili, the once most wanted widow in Umuli, was now living in a strange village. She was doing this and no one caught her until one day, the owner of the house had unexpectedly paid a visit at his building one early Sunday morning and saw Kambili sleeping there. He was surprised to see a young lady sleeping alone there, not afraid of anything, and he woke her up. Kambili opened her eyes and was shocked to see a strange man looking closely at her. She started to beg him to spare her, but the young man calmed her down 
and introduced himself as the owner of the house. He recognized her as one of the laborers who worked on his site, but Kambili did not recognize him, and she was even more scared and started to beg. Please, sir, don't sack me. Don't send me away. I won't sleep here again. The man was surprised and assured her that he won't sack her. He then asked her why she was sleeping outside. And when Kambili told him that she had nowhere to go, he took pity on her and told her to follow him. She went with him and he drove her to his family house where his wife was. He introduced Kambili to his wife. And when the wife heard of her story, she took pity on her too. They told Kambili that they were in search of a cook who would live with them in their house in the city. And Kambili immediately accepted to work for them. And days later, she went with them to the city. This couple were called the Ojukus and they had two children. Immediately the children saw Kambili, they ran to hug her and welcomed her. Their parents were surprised but glad too. There was something pure about Kambili that made them took pity on her. And now their children too confirmed it. Kambili worked very diligently. She ensured that the meals were ready on time and she was also a friend and big sister to the children. She was treated very well by the whole family and she in turn served them well. And then one day, the children came to tell her that their uncle was coming to visit them. He was their father's younger brother and they told Kambili the meal to prepare for him as they wanted to surprise him. Kambili prepared the dish and by the time their uncle arrived, she was in her room already. The children were very excited and could not wait to present the surprise meal to Undubisi, their uncle. No way, you did not prepare this. Who prepared this for you? Undubisi asked, smiling at them. The children tried to pretend but could not and had to take Undubisi to meet Kambili. Kambili was shocked to see a young man in her room. But then, she guessed that he was the uncle they talked about and greeted him. Undubisi was surprised on seeing her, but quickly thanked her for helping his niece and nephew surprise him. Undubisi planned to stay for a long time and so Kambili was no longer free as she was before. The children were now with their uncle and so she would always lock herself up in her room until she wanted to cook. Undubisi noticed and started to intentionally get Kambili involved. He would tell the children to go stay with Kambili and when he came over and she wanted to leave, he would stop her. He just wanted her to be more relaxed and gradually Kambili relaxed. She saw that Undubisi was just as free-spirited as the Ojukus and their children and so she had to let go of whatever negative thoughts she had about him. They soon became friends and Ndubisi would assist her in the kitchen sometimes. The Ojukus had noticed their closeness and did not think much of it. Kambili had never given them any reason to doubt before and so they trusted her. Ndubisi had noticed that Kambili was trying to hold back something that was bothering her. But when he asked her what it was, she would deny having any problem until one day when he caught her crying and she could no longer escape his questions. She then opened up to him about her past and much to her surprise, he did not judge her. Instead, he sympathized with her and then asked, What did you see the night before your late husband died? Kambili paused and did not want to share, but then she said, I saw my husband, who was supposed to be on a business trip, entangled with one of my maids. It was really heartbreaking and I felt betrayed. I don't even know how long he had been doing it for. He did not know I saw them because he just entered into the room the next morning and acted normally. The thought that my husband was usually in the house with one of the maids, while I would assume that he was away, was really unbearable. I never got the chance to confront him before he died. Undubisi was really sorry that such a young woman had gone through such pain and traumatizing situations.
He now understood her better and was more sensitive towards her henceforth. They grew closer and closer, sharing each other's secrets and soon fell in love. It came as a shock to the Ojukus when Ndubisi told them that he wanted to marry Kambili. It felt too sudden, but then they gave their approval and Ndubisi started to make plans to marry Kambili. He took her to the village to meet his grandmother who raised them since they lost their mother at childhood. And when she saw Kambili, she was surprised and couldn't take her eyes away from her. She then told Ndubisi, you have found favor. This young lady here has a very strong spirit. Her presence in any man's life can make him very wealthy. But there would be great problem if that man hurts her or tries to deceive her. She might not know, but that spirit would fight that man and even kill him. My son, you need to be very sure. This woman is not the kind of woman you can toy with. You have to be loyal and honest with her. Ndubisi and Kambili were both shocked at what his grandmother said. And when they left there, Kambili tried to warn Ndubisi to not risk his life with her. But Ndubisi reassured her, I will love and stay faithful to you. I loved you even before I knew about your past or who you were. So this does not change anything. They got married and one year into the marriage, Kambili conceived and gave birth to a baby boy. Ndubisi loved and treated Kambili very well and his life turned around miraculously for the better. He got contracts upon contracts and his wealth continued to increase. They later went on to have two more children and lived together happily, raising their children in love and peace. Thank you for watching this story. Please share with me what you learned and loved about the story. And also share the story out with your loved ones. Subscribe to this channel for more interesting stories. And give the story a thumbs up also. Until I bring another story away. Bye!